So welcome to this talk. Um, we're pleased to welcome Leo Find Eisen and Markus Zimmermann. Hi. <laughs> Leo is a researcher focusing on the social communities around constructed languages, and that can be, for example, language like Esperanto, but also a language like Python. And he's currently working at the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna in a research project on artists' books. Let's simplify that. He was the keynote speaker at events like the Ars Electronica, Transmediale, Lead Awards, and Republica. <coughs> Markus has studied computer science in Berlin, and he has studied also architecture in Vienna, Buenos Aires, and Shenzhen. He has participated in various projects, exhibits, and lectures. And together, they will be diving into the world of art today for us and introduce the Fluxus movement and especially compare the ideals of the Fluxus movement with tools and methods of online communities today. It's a very interesting topic. The name of the ta talk is Fluxus Cannot Save the World, what hacking has to do with avant-garde art of the 1960s. So please help me welcome again a round of applause for Marcus and Leo. Thank you. Twelve Fluxus Ideas One Globalism Two Unity of Art and Life Three Intermedia Four Experimentalism Five Chance Six Playfulness Seven Simplicity Eight Implicativeness Nine Exemplativism Ten Specificity Eleven Presence in Time Twelve Musicality Fluxus. Twelve Fluxus Ideas. One Globalism. Two Unity of Art and Life. Three Intermedia. Four Experimentalism. Five Chance. Six Playfulness. Seven Simplicity. Eight Implicativeness. 9 Exemplativism 10 Specificity 11 Presence in Time 12 Musicality Herzlich willkommen, welcome. This talk will be in English because English is a coordination of behavior in a semiotic system, the English language, that more people understand than German. And uh, one of the 12 ideas that you have heard of Fluxus is globalism. So please, always choose the language that more people understand. You know that this might be a trap for a lot of projects. But, you, but we, should, we should acknowledge the fact. Now, thank you very much for attending today. I, I want to make a short presentation of what the presentation should be, a meta presentation. We, um, we have been researching, Markus Zimmermann and me, for the last five years. Uh, and we sort of apologize about the future in Fluxus. Uh, it was really for an application in Vienna that we had to do it. 
but uh, that, that is a little history, our history, which, which is quite interesting. But we were in, a, in an interesting real experimental project with the city administration. They invited us to renew their ways of dealing with this. And, uh, and when we got resistance, we tried to resist the resistance. And this is the future in Fluxus, uh, which made this possible. Um, how did this come? Yes, I have been teaching in the Academy of Fine Arts as a media philosopher. So imagine you have students of restoration, of architecture, some people from the philosophy department of the university, you have painters, you have people who print, so you have the old academic arts. And I try to invite them to understand before it happens what will come in their future from people who program. Is it possible at all to do art in programming? Is it possible at all to do art in mathematics? So these, these things we, we talked about. And so um, we talked also about networked communities in the arts of the 60s and 70s especially. So there was situationism, I could see that. There was art and language. And we will uh, come to that. And the, the aim is then before we could to come to Fluxus and then the prize question, is Fluxus still alive? Can an art movement be alive without people? No. Art is a form of tradition. If you don't <coughs> decide to be in the tradition, you won't be able to deliver and transfer it. Regis Debré, uh, a French media theoretician, calls uh, one very important thing that we can decide to do is to transfer a tradition. Of course, this is an avant-garde tradition. This is a tradition of tongue-in-cheek, of being irreverent to institutions, to museums, etc. So in a way, what we hear today is the 68 ideas. Where have they gone? Do we have to, now, as a culture, we are in deep doodle, as Spielberg would say, in our culture at the moment, I think. If you have been listening to some of the uh, other talks, uh, you will know that we have to be quite inventive, not only as individuals, but as groups. Maybe we have to be more inventive to clarify and polarize design goals for specific technical parts, but also for how do museums, how can they work together to save the privacy? That's a very interesting question, no? because we pay a lot of tax money, not only to the secret services, but only to the art services of our uh, societies. Now, when I was teaching the students, I could see that there was uh, one movement which calls itself a mon movement. I could see that they call themselves fluxus, and, and somebody says fluxus is this, and you will hear some of these definitions, and others say, the special thing about Fluxus is that it is undefinable. Okay. <laughs> so they frustrate you in the beginning. If you're a scientist, you want to have clear concepts and you want to say one, two, three. Um, but this could be a bit the same reason why it's hard to write a history of Fluxus, but actually because it's 50 years old or over 50 <coughs> years, it is not at all impossible, right? It's, it's, it's behind us. But if you try to write uh, about, for instance, the Chaos Computer Club, 95 to 2000, the history. It's not so easy to do it. Why? Because the Chaos Computer Club is a very horizontal uh, presence in time environment. A mailing list, chat logs, uh, announcements, flame wars. Yeah? So we have to reread them and then, nice enough, people from the 95 to 2000 from the Chaos Computer Club would still be living. So we can work with four people for two months and then we send them the draft so they can see because they are empirically time witnesses of the presence in time which is now 20 years ago. Now this is what Markus and me could also see that the, they are still living fluxus people. Yeah? So when we started in 2010 uh, we asked some friends whether they have friends who know whether Fluxus people are still living because in 62 it started. 
And yes, they are, and you will see them, which is great. Um, so now this is from, uh, from the web, of course, and some people say, uh, some of the Fluxus says, we invented the web, actually. <laughs> so, uh, but they're not very loud in this, but maybe they're correct, maybe they're correct. But uh, of course the question is, do, did they win the technicalities? No, no, most of that was in CERN, DARPA in the years before in America. So what did, did they mean, we invented the web? Um, I think they, they invented methods to do things in distributed collaboration, huh? which, is, uh, which is quite a fine tuning to work with each other over time. But I think this is uh, something which makes a big quality in Fluxus. And that means that they're not such a gated community. Yeah? Um, and if you see here, it's also very interesting. The, the normal one, two, three that all the philosophers do. Yeah, there's only one world. No, the world is divided. Or you go more on the dialectical Hegelian to say, no, oh, there's always the third option lurking in the background. And uh, here we start with the one, the fluxus that most art collectors and art historians care about at this time. We're talking about uh, around the millennium here, 2000, 15 years ago. So Fluxus with Matsunas, we will see of him also. Matsunas is an impresario, they call him. He's not the leader, he wasn't the center, but he had this very, uh, they called him a detail man. Yeah? He was very, very sure about what Fluxus values should be and which artist should be on it. And if some artist went ideologically or with a funny work or in a too big institution with too money, he would say, I have a hundred name list of Fluxus in New York, and Nam John Pike is out now. But I have some other people I can put in, so hmm. Yeah. This is actually a very important anecdote in the Fluxus history, that uh, Nam John Pike and others visited Matsunas on the deathbed to say it's okay again. Yeah. Uh, also in the, uh, so what we're talking about here is oral culture. I would claim that the Chaos Computer Club, in a lot of aspects of their communication, is an oral culture in the medium of chats and message boards and mailing lists. Yeah? Um, and oral cultures are always, normally you do interviews, and then they come up with stories and say X went to Z, and then they had a struggle, and then D came on, and now, yes, this was it. Yeah? So this is how myths and legends are also building, and that is quite good for a community. But it can, you know, the, 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 the helpful ingredient can become a poison, it can be too little or too much. So also th there has to be a collective intelligence to make a very improbable status of a large distributed community of many intelligences, many people living in very different countries, which is actually what is evolving now. And maybe it's, it's, there is no way for anybody to hinder and to have an obstacle in front of the fact that we will become a global culture. But maybe we become a totally surveilled global culture. <laughs> we can go everywhere, but nothing is different in the sense of somebody else has more memory of me than my best friends. Right? That's not a good start for freedom. Uh, but, of course, we are here and, and we, we applied for a talk uh, to, to start something, rather. Of course, we want to uh, convey you some information about the deep history of what is Fluxus today. It started really in the First World War, maybe even earlier, but in the First World War, there, there's a cluster of people coming together in the Dada movement. And then the question is whether it's still living. Uh, and, and now you can make, I could say, please become a non-artist of the Fluxus tradition, right? Come to our club, uh, but we wouldn't know where is our club, right? It's a bit like the Pirate Bay people, uh, or the Pirat Buron, the, 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 the lawyers of the MPAA in America, the, the people who said, ah, you're sharing, you're stealing our films. And they thought that the Pirat Buron, who had the idea for the Pirate Bay Torrent website, uh, website for sharing, 
stuff, sharing films, books, everything. They thought there would be a like anarchist army of 20 people, you know, having a big room with guns and want to, want to free the copying of everything. But actually it was just we four students in two or three towns, you know, having for the chat. And, oh. But they, just, they had an idea and the idea was to be resilient. The idea was to have the Pirate Bay online, whatever they do, because of the distributed technical infrastructure and the many friends you have on the world. Which is still true, by the way. Pirate Bay is still reachable. But, you know, two of the people who were then the technical inventors uh, were in jail and one is far away <laughs> and don't, doesn't come back to Sweden, so you pay a price also. So the fluxus that most art collectors, can you please go uh, to the first again? Back. So 80s till now, he says that in 2000 around, <coughs> Fluxus with Matsunas, Fluxus after Matsunas, new directions in Fluxus. So this is a Fluxist making this. Fluxus activities and events created by a new generation of people drawn to Fluxus, largely ignored at this time by collectors and historians. So that's also important. You have to understand that there are incremental phases where there's a fruitful encounter of old and new without anybody noticing. Which I think happens to a lot of communities here at the Chaos Computer Club. Yeah? When, when old veterans who invented the spreadsheet, you know, <laughs> come, to, come here and you, wow, you were really the first human being to think of this. Which is a great anthropological feeling. Yeah? That, that actually we, if we work together or if we, if we meet in an interesting way, which the whole Congress, I think, is, and it has very strict rules and uh, developed rules to make 13,000 people possible. Yeah? So that's a sort of community social design. What, what is, uh, so, so we want to be open so we can't allow people who push closeness and say, this is my freedom. Yeah? So all these dialectics of the values that you convey and how it then really works in real time. And now they go back and say, unexplored territory, that is our past, our developmental past, right? So this Luxus is broadly focused on human creativity, culture and consciousness. It does not, this does not rely on the issues of our <coughs> agendas or history of art for its meaning and success. And that's very important. <coughs> Fluxus defines itself as being fed by outside of art. And this is one of the 12 Fluxus ideas, which you saw in the beginning. Uh, Markus Zimmermann has done this, this trailer for our participation in the Donau Festival. <laughs> now I have some questions for you. Somebody of you know the Donau Festival, Krems? How many? Okay, super. So that's a so, so, uh, somehow like a network performance festival. We were performing next to Laurie Anderson, maybe you know her, from the 60s, 70s, and, and James Blake who is, you know, limits to your love, this guy. Um, but we were there to, to do conceptual interventions because as you will see, Fluxus has musical values conceptualized for social encounters. Yeah? Fluxus cannot save the world is by itself by a Fluxus. It's 2002 and uh, I, I just want to want to let your ears ring a bit. Ben Vautier, a French fluxist, uh, calls a little exhibition in, uh, in Italy in 2002, Fluxus Cannot Change the World. What do you think were the talk before? Were there young people who said, but yeah, Fluxus and we should start and da da da? Or was he himself, you know, just frustrated by all these years of very, very abstract talking and whatever? I don't know, but you could ask him actually. Ben Vautier, I think, has the most creative website of a nearly 80 year old in the world. Because we got to know him, his grandson is doing all the technicalities. And if people come, they want to make interviews. Huh? So they work together. Collaboration, cooperation is a, is a big ideal in Fluxus. So please. Uh, we now have. We start in the 19th century. Uh, okay, I'll ask you again. Who knows Brian Eno? 
right? Who knows what Eric Satie would have to do with Brian Eno? Okay, so, so that's like, like two or three percent uh, of those who know Eno. Um, who knows that uh, Brian Eno was visiting Julian Assange some weeks ago? Just as many as, <laughs> uh, as who know that he had <laughs> to do with Satie. So Brian Eno uh, was, a, was a student uh, at, at one of our great teachers of media art, Roy Ascot. And Brian Eno is known for ambient music, music that is not there to tell you something in a way. It's an interior design, and it can be gray music because gray in the outside makes your own thoughts flow. Your feelings are different, and something can be expressed coming to the outside, depending on your articulation. Eric Satie was one of the first to write modular ways, not the first actually, people like Fresco Baldi and the music history and so on, they had to look from the organ whether still people are wait waiting for the Christian thing about the eating, yeah? So a very long row, and so, so he, he, he flipped the page and he had modularized chords, yeah? So, so you can make endless pieces of music because they said you can, you can go this way from this chord or this way from this chord, and then you can go circles, which, of course, media artists love. Yeah? A circle, a loop, yeah? a reverb, a delay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do something with it. Uh, so Satie, uh, and, and we have three guests here, because we will now move step by step from the 1910s to the 1980s. And then I invite you to fall into the gap with me. Because I believe that from 78 to 91, one or two years more or less, yeah, depending on what happens, because history doesn't happen in clear years. But, but it also doesn't happen in one, five years or the other. It's, it's not important. No, no. Mostly two or three or five years there, the real thing happens. Yeah? This also is a human history, because people might be influenced by idea, but only two years later they actually they, they conceptualize how they can make interesting stuff with it. Or they, they don't have fear anymore, they have the courage, very easy, to say, cool, I'll do this. Have you ever thought when Julian Assange, for instance, uh, decided to, I'm, I'm doing this, you know? I think, uh, especially in the Chaos Computer Club, there are hundreds of people that wonder <laughs> what happened in this guy yeah? to do this. And now I want you to wonder a second time why Brian Eno visits him. Because Brian Eno is very, very sensitive to good social interior design. And, and uh, one of the most important people to show us the dirt and to show us the third party members that are watching when we want to get to know each other. And actually without, I, I would say that 90% of what's happening bad now is without big reason, right? We, we, we are, it's irrationality of the interplay of institutions and of some powers that are bringing us in big trouble. But um, so, so Sati, is something where Digital Courage or Filmboot.org, uh, who of you knows Digital Courage? Yes, okay. So, so we have here Padelun, and I think he is, he is one of my first people of the empty 80s, I call it. The empty 80s is where I don't know what happened to distributed art practices. Yeah, where are they now? In the art world we say, yeah, that was the time of Kippenberger and, and, and Pike, you know got older, and mm. yes, but uh, we have him here. We also have somebody from the 90s <coughs> when something like the Fluxus movement can reboot on HTML, maybe on BBS. Yeah? What they call and have practiced as male art in the 70s is very easy to reboot in the 90s with the new distributed structures 
that you not only can say, I want to be a note, and they say, yeah, dance for us, then you get the note. Yeah? The, no, they said, don't dance for us. Here is the software to make your own note. And with this note, you can make your own mushrooming horizontally in your town, in your real space. Wow. So presence in time curated by yourself. Bulletin board systems and then HTML, etc. So let's go on. What we see here happened through the First World War. Uh, people who were very anti-bourgeois and they were vehemently anti-war. And one of them, there's a group of people and also what, what is, is now parallel or analogous to the Fluxus 50, 60, 70 years later, is that the people come from quite different disciplines. If you're an opera, you have to know singing, you have to know stage design, you have to know music. Yeah? So, so it's, it's in, in itself a meta art form. Uh, so a lot of people came from theater, but also they studied jurisdiction, the law. And here we have Hugo Ball, and this is an important moment in the beginning of the Cabaret Voltaire, he was calling himself the magic bishop. Yeah? And he had to be, actually two people had to uh, carry him into, into the room at Cabaret Voltaire. And he was, he was proclaiming what? A new religion? The death of God again? The death of God, uh, the B, B series? No, he was, uh, he was practicing concrete poetry. He was dealing with what I do here, dear, ear, yeah? This would be a bit more dada. Is there a, a, an animal going to death at the moment? No, it's dada. Yeah? But it's not something that nice bourgeois men and women would come in the rope in the evening to have the white wine in the white cube. Yeah? So irreverence against bourgeois representation. Is, is one value that you have here. And it's called the Cabaret Voltaire. And if you're interested more, so please go to Dada. And all of, most of, but always as sides, it's good to have multi perspectives on one theme. And with these people, with these like Dada movement, situationists, letterists, fluxus, uh, it's always good to, to not only go over one person into the labyrinth. Yeah? So the next please. Then we have, here is a, a, one of the first uh, Dada, page composé par Tristan Sara, that was next to Hugo Ball, one of the most important. So these people invented a lot. They had, they had new ways to, to form objects and to make a mask out of it that is now a painting. Or they said, yeah, let's, let's totally destruct the way we read a newspaper. Let's have a different layout. Yeah? Or let's, they, let's do automatic things. Let's not proclaim that our talk and our language uh, published on paper is really, you know, talking about the world. Let's have the new eyes and new ears developed by going very structurally, very analytically, very constructivistically, very minimally yeah, to how a structure of an artwork is composed. Let's go to the next, please. So here is the Congress of the Constructivist Dadaists. Yeah. And uh, I wouldn't say, yeah, they, they were making fun, but it's sometimes violent fun and sometimes serious fun. Yeah. If you only have the fun scala for Dadaist, Situationist, Letterist, Fluxist, I think Fluxus is most fun. Situation is little fun. A yeah, lot of, lot of may, has maybe to do with Hegel uh, dialectic and you know, uh, two dialecticians who fight with each other, what is the best third way, <laughs> is a very nice situation to be exploding. So, um, flu Yes, this is, i just tell you, insight of the time and of the stress of the First World War. But in Switzerland, and Switzerland is neutral, 
which means that if you're appalled by what's happening, if you see how, let's say, the 19th century bourgeois world is sort of collapsing, yeah? they don't have new recipes, they don't go new ways. So what happens when sort of fiery nationalisms become national sects fighting each other? That was Europe in the First World War. This is what the European Union is built against. It, by the way, it happened the second time. <laughs> and always Germany losing. Germany is a loser. You know? don't, don't go to war. <laughs> um, you didn't hear this? It's about that we are so happy Europeans that we all should happily live together. Um, so here we have Marcel Duchamp. Next to Eric Satie, he is one of the inspirators of how he understood his art form. He would say grand things like, the real artist has already gone underground. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do we compare him with Tintoretto? Michelangelo? Do we compare him with Gustav Mahler? So the real Gustav Mahler has gone underground? So that would be the question that, that we would start off a discussion with in an art academy because the people actually want to become artists. So these, this is their history. Uh, in Fluxus, I try to present this for the ones of you who are interested as something that you, you have to research for yourself, actually. There's a lot of DIY but also cognitive DIY. Duchamp, you know, who knows the ready-mades of Duchamp? <laughs> ready-mades means that you put the normal of the outside into the unnormal museum space where only unnormal masterpieces are. So you, pu you put the unmasterly piece that was done in a industrial production and you put it into the white cube which was a scandal in the beginning. And of course, this guy knew that the scandal would come, so he would say, uh-huh, you know, and then, so he could push the buttons of the a bit more idiotic, uh, idiotically people of the art critique in Paris. So he put an urinoir there, the, f le f le fontaine, yeah, the fountain. But normally, the fountain is the man urinating in the urinoir. So that was a scandal then, but then he also said, yeah, I'm bored by art. I really ready-made, I look for objects that are not really fascinating me. That's much too loud. I don't look for objects that bore me, yeah, that are just nothing. I look for objects that are in the gray zone in between, right? So, so by recalibrating the taste values, you actually go, uh, go to something that Duchamp said, and so you can also see Fluxus is not about making rubbish, yeah? but it has the aesthetics and the taste of, of uh, Duchamp in there. Can we go on, please? Yeah. Then we have, after the Second World War, in the Second World War, really, a Romanian uh, poet called Izu was founding the Letrist movement. And that was important because he said, aha, you have feelings and now you want to express them. Maybe to yourself, you write poetry. Maybe to somebody else. What will you use? German language? That's a foreign thing to feelings. Because your feelings might be differently structured. They have a different tone. They have different truth and reality than any German who ever created a word, right? So, so you come to the very special um, uh, section of experimental languages, yeah? where artists have created experimental worlds, languages, it can be color codes and whatever. But normally, of course, uh, uh, so the dictionary is not enough to express feelings. That's a very deep understanding, not only for artists, but maybe the artist is the supernormal human being of his time, right? Or the hypernormal, or the normal normal, or the normal 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 normal. So I break rules of German grammar and syntax in order to, yeah, to, let, to let our ears click again. Because in constructivism, Umberto Maturana, may I ask you who knows this name? Okay, Umberto Maturana is 
a Chilean biologist who became the inspirator for Niklas Luhmann's system theory of social systems. And he says, what is a language? A language is functioning and there if we coordinate our coordinations of behavior together. Language is coordination of coordination of behavior. So he would say, you want to go this way on a street and you want to take a taxi. But the taxi comes from the other side. I saw him do this. And then all you do is <laughs> and, and immediately the taxi driver understands, aha, he wants me to go in the other direction, but with me. So I have to change direction and then he, I will transport him, he pays me. That would be the coordination of behavior that normally customer and client have. If now I do a <laughs> and then I run away, <laughs> the taxi driver has four reasons to be pissed. <laughs> right? Now I say, I, I call the taxi and I say I want to go from A to B in 10 minutes. And they say, yeah, then it's language, but the coordination also works. It's just that it wasn't presence, it was presence in time, but by media. <coughs> Agenda 2020, Paris, the climate goals, that is all coordination of behavior, of course. Yeah. How, how eager are we to see texts of coordination of behavior of, of countries and their politicians to actually be, become reality that we can see? Like taxi driver drives, I give him money. They talk about climate change goals, it actually happens. Right? So the first lie of language can be that you promise something which you don't hold to. <laughs> of course. Yeah? And, and if I pay you with my tax money, the last thing you should ever do, because you got thrown out of the job, is to lie to my parliamentarians, baby. Have you ever seen generals lie to my parliamentarians in the last years, openly, without the law, without the text of the law, sending them to the other place where liars are kept to think about it? Here you can see how the promises of democracy and so on have to be taken double, serious, 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 because the coordination of behavior is important, right? My coordination of behavior might be collected in the NSA, because metadata is a language in the sense that it's coordination of coordination of behavior, you understand? If somebody else knows more about me and he is not controlled by my parliamentarians, I'm a deep doodle, as Spielberg would say. I oh, know, I think this is Ganga guy says it. Good, let's come back to this. Now John Cage, he puts a lot of musicality into the Fluxus movement. Um, John Cage, found out he was gay in the end of the Second World War. This is something you don't often hear. And he had his boyfriend, Mercy Cunningham. And his Catholic upbringing gave him a lot of weight, a lot of guilt feelings. And so he, he listened to a, a, one of the maybe most important philosophers of the 20th century, Daisetsu Suzuki, who was invited to Columbia. Daisetsu Suzuki had the problem to have Nagasaki and Hiroshima burdened Japanese to tell them why this is honorable to live from now on, you know? <laughs> because they have a very, very strong um, pride culture in Japan. But this Daisetsu Suzuki came and this inspired Cage to have an enhanced notion of what is music, an enhanced notion of what the composer should do. Enhanced notion means it's media theory, interesting, New notation, don't use the five lines only, or maybe not at all. The thing is now that the later fluxus will come from people, a lot of them, that were composition students with John Cage in the late 50s. So a lot of them thought about music, something very immaterial and something incredibly physical. You don't get any music without physics, all right? So let's go on. We have 20 mm. minutes, 15 minutes. 
Uh, Duchamp, you can see here, he was the, a very, Duchamp is a master of not caring. Yeah? And you, you can see it here, he just looks at his own play and not at the woman. And they played some chess together. That's the late Duchamp, but it's a very uh, <laughs> important image. Let's go on, please. And uh, of course, what we see here is Alfred Jarry. That's already 19th century, but that's the mad dictator. So people were so f frustrated by the closeness of the society around them that they made theater plays with an absurdly fat, stupid, gluttonous dictator that just puts everything around him in turmoil. That's Uberoi, and that is the, the name giver of the Ubu Web. You know Ubu Web? Who knows Ubu Web? Okay, so, so just think of Ubu, that's the thing, and Ubu Web. This is the most important archive about all the art that I'm talking about now. Dadaist, Letrist, Situationist, Fluxus. And then, not all artists are obliged to be part of a movement that they then say it doesn't exist. Right? So artists are cunning and they're tricksters sometimes. Some artists are really like this. But, uh, but the Ubu web is important for research in the art academies. Let's go on. Right. And now, art and language is, an, uh, is, is another thing I wanted to point you to. These are English painters that started going into the theory more. Theory mostly means what sort of society is now or has been that made the representative art, that made the, oh, I want to have the landscape painting from this guy and I pay a lot of money to have it at home. The, it says the content of this painting is invisible, the character and dimension of the content are to be kept permanently secret, known only to the artist. Sounds a bit like sort of a NSA uh, exhibition contribution by some artist. Um, also, Yoko Ono was, was important for the early Fluxus. Uh, she, she gave her apartment in the early 60s for the Fluxus people to meet. Let's go on. And now I want to come slowly. Here you see a computer, an Altair 8800, which is already 1975. Why am I talking about this? Because it is not the personal computer. It's not you and me and everybody here that can afford it. Today in Aldi, what you? 399, 499, and you have a power machine. <laughs> yeah, great. So everybody can have it. So uh, now I have uh, the first guest, uh, Fadeloun. Can you just come? Because I have to skip a bit letters and Situationists, but uh, the slides will be online. Um, can you just tell me, is it? Yes. So who knows Padelun already? Wow, OK. Um, I know me best. OK. So <laughs> Padelun and Rena Tangens are, are early friends of some teachers that I know, um, the so-called Minus Delta T and Van Gogh TV uh, ragtag band of whatever, but who made quite beautiful poetic projects like this here. Uh, they transported a stone, not to the west, but to the east. They wanted to have a stone from the granite of, of Stonehenge, transported to Bangkok. Why? Because somebody was invited to a, bang, uh, to a performance festival in Bangkok, and they said, we don't come as, as tourists. The, the travel will, will be the work that we do. But please, first, uh, you, you know people from Menos Delta T? Uh, of course, I, I was a little bit a part of it. Yeah. And I have 400 of the shares. If somebody wants to buy some, <laughs> send me an email. How much? <laughs> oh, good question, good question. Yeah. So here you see shared space. You see an Austrian prince and I think an Indian on the right. Do you know this? No, no, it's Bumipool. OK. Yeah. So please, Padelun, you've been part of this. And now uh, you have been, yeah. for many, many years, fighting for digital freedom. Yeah. Um, how, how does it go together in your in, life? In the 18th, you, you never uh, say the word punk on the stage. Yeah. Um, and uh, in, the, in the punk movement, 
you know there are some old fat guys who tell something about fluxus, perhaps it's uh, something in the behind of punk, but uh, you don't really care about them. And you invited the whole fluxus thing again. <laughs> and um, uh, we, we used the possibilities of art to be absolutely free, inventing everything, everything again, mm -hmm. um, and making funny things. And uh, we never stand on a stage and be very nice. We <laughs> go into the front table and it. Things like that. You know, it's uh, okay. <laughs> just for fun. You can try it out. <laughs> Sorry for bothering you. And uh, maybe, maybe you look at your own future. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, uh, one time there comes a moment when you think, yeah, what will we do with it? What What's about the rest of the society of the people? You say they are not so intelligent. <laughs> uh, uh, the families, the people who have not the time to be just an art, and we want to find out how we can use art in the normal life. And we, we find out that in art, the most important thing is to communication. You see the word communication in Communication Congress? Yes, it's from me. Really? <laughs> and you really, sure? really. Wow. And, um, and but it's, it's, it's the English very word, important not the German word. to bring people together. Mm -hmm. And we find out in the hacker scene, people coming together, they really not like each other in the beginning. Perhaps times before they will change the sides of the street when they uh, meet. But um, you have one thing you have to know, you have to find out. And so we come together in the early years when the Cars Communication Congress was in Hamburg, still. <laughs> in the beginning in the Eidelstädte Burger House, and you find out you can talk to people you perhaps do not like and learn to like them. Mm -hmm. And it's very important to find a frame of art around the people to bring them together in peace. And so we used Eric Satie's music, his idea of making pattern music and his word Rahmenbau, mm -hmm. perhaps Translation, interior design. Interior into, design uh, of, 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 your, of your daily feeling. Yeah. And we, make, uh, we, we made um, uh, events with uh, um, piano, 14 hours, one minute piece, all the time the same, and making a room where you can sleep, you can read, you just don't have just to sit and uh, uh, listen to it, but you can get co in contact with other people and have a peaceful atmosphere. And also, this Congress is made uh, an idea of atmosphere, mostly uh, uh, built um, in the beginning by Wau Holland's ideas, the founder of the Congress, and Stefan Verneri, two guys, one hippie, one tough guy who wants, is a little bit uh, fascistic. Really? <laughs> no, not, not really, but he, he brought the power, rigorous, and said, you make this now! Okay, yeah, I'll do it. And, uh, and wow, very, very nice, saying, we don't have security, we have angels. Yeah, this brings him absolutely as an attitude to, and if, when you talk to the people from the caterer, they all say, it's wonderful to work on this Congress. Very nice people, absolutely different from all other Congresses, uh, they, they will be here. And this is a wonderful uh, thing to see how art becomes to a better way to live together. I think it's enough for the Thanks. moment. I have some prospects about <laughs> of my work. Uh, bring in here when you go out, take it with you, and you will see what will art can become. Thanks a lot, Barilu. <laughs> and now, uh, we hope to start here a project uh, to get the empty 80s, which I don't know, but Padelun is already a little less empty uh, for me, because in 78, uh, not only Matsunas, who you heard of, died, but also somebody said Fluxus is dead, and this man was from the Silverstein collection, which had a lot of Fluxus pieces. Now in art, if you have the best collection of an art movement and it's dead, then it really goes up in the value. So some people, some people may declare something dead to profit from it. 
<laughs> now that's not nice, especially not with fluxus, which doesn't come from art, as they say. Yeah? Uh, so you have the 80s that we, uh, I, I'm, I'm asking here, for instance, I heard that Val Holland was asked by the fluxus uh, participant, Joseph Beuys, to bring one of the first personal computers to his Dusseldorf Academy very important in the arts. Namjoon Pike and boys were in the Dusseldorf Academy. Um, so I, I want to get people who are really eyewitnesses or yeah, have first-hand knowledge, like a journalist, you have to validate your sources also. And, but then comes the 90s, and in the 90s, maybe the, this is where you start to come in, the younger ones of you, the BBS, bulletin board systems, and the HTML was invented, and then something happened in New York. Yeah, so basically in 91, uh, Wolfgang Stehle uh, founded the thing BBS and he was an artist, uh, did a video work before and uh, played around uh, with computers and got a modem and the first step at that time you went online on a BBS, that means like you're dialing up uh, on a board modem and you had like, uh, I don't know if they have the image up with a uh, terminal interface and what happened then, friends from Europe came over to New York and uh, saw the BBS in New York running and then nodes were set it up uh, in Cologne, in Vienna, I think all together like 15 nodes, uh, Amsterdam, London, Rome. And the transfer data on uh, artist and political discourse overnight because the, the traffic rate was cheaper. Uh, and so they established a place, uh, a mixture between online and virtual community, having a basement uh, office in New York and having an art discussion and uh, pushing art forward, being like always more on the fringe out of the institutions. And the idea behind was like, you have like, A, you are independent, uh, so you call it bullshit, bullshit. Uh, you are autonomous, you try to help uh, self-organized systems, and you uh, play around with this, and at the end of the day, you always laugh about yourself. That was like the best thing uh, about that. Um, we, uh, that was the first office there. I only got to like 98 as a system administrator, uh, 95, they ran the first uh, website, which is still on online, which is called old.thing.net. In 98, uh, uh, 95, that was in 98, uh, Max Corsat created uh, the communicator, which was like a <coughs> lamp stake based uh, bulletin board system. So you had all the functionality of a BBS, traditional one in the web browser. At that time, it was quite mind blowing. Uh, we had uh, up to 8,000 people in that system uh, where you had. Uh, web streaming on videos with G2 on 33 kilobits, so you can imagine how big the quality was like that. And uh, threads, uh, projects that was like in the office space, uh, audio streaming, so we had like a live recording always from our phone calls and support uh, with Verizon and uh, some other stuff. Uh, video broadcasting from the office editions was like for selling, uh, helping artists uh, selling the stuff and sites, so we went in uh, 97, it used to be an ISP, and being in this like art <coughs> background community, we had like hilarious customers like uh, Yesmen, I don't know who knows them. Uh, they the Yesmen, who knows the Yesmen? The Yesmen, look them up, there are, if, if you wanted to say, hmm, is there a Fluxus tradition in it? Of course you can ask them, but of, your, of course in the Fluxus it's also about art, so what is the work? And the wor their work would in Fluxus be pranks, yeah? They, they are tricksters that trick corporations into believing absolutely absurd stuff as something normal in their world. So that uh, Fluxus, uh, no, the, the, the yes men save the world. That's their prank maybe. Fluxus cannot save the world, so go to the yes men. <laughs> so we're like project like this, uh, since it's now a topic again where the anti-deportation alliance, <coughs> deportation class, uh, Unolympics, uh, the gut.org uh, website. So we got shut down like three times by upstream provider. Every time in the New York Times, it was like a hilarious time. We had electronic disturbances theater, which was like at that time announced distributed denial of service attacks, which nowadays you can't do anymore because nobody has a sense of humor anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we had also Toy War, uh, which was hilarious. <laughs> and uh, by 2002, we got them like uh, cut off by upstream provider because they had too much troubles with us. And uh, the site is still up and running. We are an ISP um, doing de decentralized work. We are a small community. Uh, and the question we're always asking ourselves, how we push that stuff was happened at that time, like in the late 90s or early 90s, uh, which was basically like 
real online freedom, or at least you thought it is. Uh, how you transferred this to 2015, so what our next step will be probably, we have like then a community owned back, uh, small boutique ISP where we have an entry to like some stuff you shouldn't have entry to. Uh, and having a hardcore technical side where I shout out to Jan uh, Gerber who is uh, uh, running the backend uh, and being like one of these like little nice niches on the web. Are you an artist? <coughs> I wouldn't call myself an artist, no. I'm just uh, playing around. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so, Walter Palmetzhofer. Uh, we are ending now early. Yes. We are ending now. Or do we have two minutes more or we should sh shop, stop sharp? No. Yes. So, <laughs> we, should, uh, we should stop now. Uh, some of the videos that we wanted to show you. Uh, we will put online. Uh, we are here to talk more if you're interested. And um, I, I'm not sure whether this talk is normal or not normal for the Chaos Computer Club. But we hope that, uh, yeah, this is Constant Dullard. We worked. We wanted to show you some, some uh, fluxus concepts that we understood and people that we thought have uh, uh, similar analog conceptualization. And this is uh, Constant Dullard. This is presence in time. Yeah? He is implic implicativeness. He is really memorizing this 90s DVD uh, aesthetics, which we all forgot. So it's a sort of a nerd uh, melancholy in it also. Then it's simplicity, because he does uh, what he does. Uh, he just, you know, he can do the work like in, in one minute he's ready. It's like very musical. I can sing, I can sing everywhere. And uh, it's globalism. Maybe a lot of people understand DVD. And uh, now, as, as it's over, I want to thank you very much for your attention. And thank you. We do not have time for any questions.